Hey guys, welcome to today's video and welcome to another Sunscreen Saturday. Probably going to air on Sunday because it is Saturday right now. And today we are taking a look at another teeny weeny. I love these. I love these. I wish, I, I want, just somebody please pile these little samples on me. This is the Peter Thomas Roth, I cannot believe I can read this, Water Drench SPF Broad Spectrum 45 Hyaluronic Cloud. Now they have a skincare product called Hyaluronic Cloud that I may still have. And I, I didn't love it. I didn't know what to think about it because it feels a little gel and then as you put it on, it changes the texture, this watery kind of a thing, which was novel and interesting. I just wasn't sure if it was effective. So I don't think I tried that more than a couple of times. This, I have a feeling, is very, very similar in texture, but I have not used this yet. Before we put it on the face, I'm going to pull up what it says in Sephora and read to you. What it is, a water resistant broad spectrum SPF 45 sunscreen with a hydrating 30% hyaluronic acid complex, unique water break texture, that's what I was talking about, and invisible finish. It's for normal, dry, combo, and oily skin. Hello, birdie. The birds have been very quiet lately. The birds aren't all the time. There's like in spring they go nuts, but lately I haven't been seeing them very much, but here's one now. It is a broad spectrum SPF 45 reef safe water resistant that protects from UVA, UV rays. Something uh, that they made up here, Pentavitin provides 72 hours of hydration even after cleansing. Huh. And hyaluronic acid complex 30% moisturizes and keeps skin hydrated during sun exposure. Non-greasy cream to water SPF 45. Let's go into actives. Avobenzene, homosalate, octosalate, and octocrylene. And then we get into the other ingredients, water number one. Number three is glycerin. Glycerin is fantastic humectant, really, really good. Uh, dimethicones, Arganea spinosa kernel oil, tocopherol acetate. Tocopherol right up there, that's great. Uh, we're skipping, you know, dimethicones, another dimethicone, cross polymer, chloride, sodium hyaluronic is halfway down the ingredient list. More dimethicones, sodium PCA. That is good for your skin. Uh, citric acid, highly questionable to put citric acid in a sunscreen. Citric acids are not great. So I wonder about that. Subtle alcohol, which is a fatty alcohol. It won't dry your skin. And then a bunch of ceramides. So the ceramides are not all grouped together, but there's ceramide NP, AP, EOP, and NS. And that might be all of the ceramides there are. I can't remember if there are five or, well, there's only four in here. So I think there's five or six ceramides, um, but not all of them are in here. Oh no, wait, yeah, AOP, EOP, EOS, NS, and NP. I think that's all the ceramides. And ceramides are fantastic for your barrier. All right, so these are pretty good ingredients. This is $52, which is on the higher end, but some people like the high end stuff. Now, before I put this on my face, I just want to say one thing. There is, I mean, I actually could do a whole video on this. I, if you have not been here before, I'm 58 years old. My skin is normal to dry. I don't have dry patches, but my skin is old and it's not producing oils and it's not producing as much collagen and elastin and hyaluronic acid which is naturally occurring in the deeper layers of your skin and ceramides which is also naturally occurring and all the good stuff that younger skin produces older skin slows down and mine is slowed down and I'm very sensitive to the weight of things on my face and to things that are drying I find mineral sunscreens to be drying. You can find them to be whatever you want. That's how I find them. I also do not subscribe to this thing I see going around in the media, in social media, and here on YouTube, that 
purports that mineral sunscreen is superior to chemical sunscreen. It is not. It's just not. And I think it's a very dangerous uh, fallacy to perpetuate because there are a lot of people out there who aren't wearing sunscreen. And there's a lot of people who have tried mineral sunscreen and have hated it. And I can see why I've tested many that are just plain awful. And they know they should wear sunscreen, but they're hearing you have to wear mineral and they can't find a mineral that works so they don't wear anything. The most effective sunscreen there is on the market is the one you put on your face. And if you don't like minerals, like I don't, then don't use minerals, use something else. There's also a fallacy, and I saw this recently in a video, and it kind of, I'm a Virgo, you guys, so when I see something that's incorrect, it kind of makes me nuts. Mineral sunscreen does not protect you from the sun in a different manner than chemical sunscreen. And we used to believe that it did. We used to believe that with minerals, it pops off your skin and it's refracted. And with chemicals, the chemical absorbs the rays and breaks them down into particles. In fact, we learned in 2016, five years ago, that that's not the case, that mineral works the same way as chemical. There's a, like a 5% spread where it does refract, but largely it breaks everything down. So they work in the same way. And again, the only reason it matters is because I want everybody to wear sunscreen. And since mineral sunscreens, for me, they're very drying, they're, it's very hard to find some, and I, but I have found some, that are elegant, cosmetically elegant. Some people have suggested to me that my problem is that I need to put on a little bit and then wait for 10 minutes, and then put on a little bit and wait for 10 minutes. To me, that's not my problem. That's the problem of the company that makes sunscreens. Don't make sunscreens like that. It's just that easy. I am not here to love everything I put on my face. I'm here to find something to love. It has to work for me. I don't work for it. I'm the customer. Do you know what I mean? That's my point of view and I'm sticking to it. So let me get my teaspoon and we're gonna put some on the face. Welcome to my teaspoons. Somebody asked me where do you get teaspoons. I, I think they were being sarcastic. You can get them at the grocery store. I keep this in here for the test and I have another set for the kitchen. I think it's three bucks. I can, I can afford that. There is a mathematical equation to how much sunscreen you need on your face to get the SPF that is on the bottle. And that is two millimeter per centimeter squared of surface. So uh, a lovely dermatologist had broken this down in a blog somewhere, measured his face by centimeter, and he found that that was for him, a male, a quarter teaspoon. I like to do a heaping quarter teaspoon for my face and my neck. Is that 100% accurate? Probably not. I'm not going to measure my face by centimeter, but I know that I'm wearing far more than most people, so I feel pretty safe for demonstration purposes and for pumping purposes, but this is for the sample. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so yeah, eight for slightly heaping. You could do nine. And I'm going to show you what it looks like in the hand because I think that's very important as well. Boop. There's still some in here, but that's what it looks like. And you know what? That makes me think, you guys, because I do this a lot, there might have been some air in there. Let's just get all of this out. This doesn't look quite right. This might not be enough but we're going to put it on the face. I oftentimes just rub my hands together and swoop, 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 but we could do it this way too. And now we'll do the swoop, swoop, swoop. And it feels like a cream, but a light cream. It's not a heavy, thick cream. There's no scent. It feels really nice. And I'm not getting that water break technology that they were talking about, not like that other product that they have, which is a moisturizer. But the more I rub it in, the less it feels like cream. 
and the more hydrating it feels, but it's just not the same way as that moisturizer. So if you love that moisturizer, you're not going to get the exact same thing. And if you don't like that moisturizer, you're not going to get the less, that same thing. There's no white cast. Uh, chemicals don't leave a white cast. And it feels really comfortable. I can tell there are dimethicones in here, but unlike the one that I tried last week, it's Dr. Dennis Gross, it doesn't feel like I'm wearing a silicone mask on my face and it doesn't feel like it's locking in all the heat in my head. So yes, we're getting a little bit of a silicone feeling, but it's not uncomfortable. So much so that I think this would make a really nice primer. A lot of people love a silicone primer before they go in with foundation. For me, I don't like it because I feel like my whole face is going to slip away. There is a silicone feeling, but very slightly. And obviously there are dimethicones in here. So we are going to let this set up for uh, seven minutes. Not quite five, not quite ten. I think that's a reasonable amount of time. I don't think waiting 30 minutes is reasonable for your average person who we want to encourage to wear sunscreen every single day. They have to put on their skincare and wait for 10 minutes, and they have to put on their sunscreen and wait for 20 minutes. They're never going to leave the house. So I'm going to give it seven minutes. We'll come back and we'll put on foundation as always to see how they work together. With my skincare, worked fine so far. Back in a sec. We are back. There's clouds are kind of in and out, so the light's changing a little bit, but it feels pretty comfortable. It doesn't feel invisible. I do feel that slightly dimethicone -y thing, but it's not uncomfortable. I usually use the Makeup Forever Reboot Foundation for all my sunscreen testing, and that's what we're going to do today. Although, right now, I'm feeling like this color isn't right for me. But for the sake of science, we're going to use it anyway. Start with two pumps. Usually two pumps does it, and I like to apply with my fingers. Because when you're applying with your fingers, especially for sunscreen tests, you can feel balling and pilling with your fingers. You know, oh, there's something going on. Actually, this is... I like the way this feels. I love this foundation, of course. I always like the way it feels, but I like the way it's meshing with this sunscreen. It's unique to me. I really actually think there are primer qualities to this, but <laughs> let's take a look at the blend. Around the nose is usually a little difficult for me, and I think for most people. There's just so many curves and things going on. It's a teeny bit streaky, but you know what? The Dr. Dennis Gross was far more streaky. It's not that bad. Not that bad. I feel like I am blended. And I'm beginning to sweat. It's be the heat is rising. Um, but there is a shine. There is a shine. There's always a shine for me, unless I use something mattifying. And because I am mature, just my skin, not emotionally, uh, I'm not going to go for something mattifying because it just, I, I'm, I'm just way too sensitive to it. It just makes me nuts. So there is definitely a sheen to this, but I'm also, I'm getting a little damp. So you know what, you guys? I'm going to turn on my fan. I'm going to cool down and come back in a few minutes. Just because as I was blending in the forehead, I thought, um, that's wet. I mean, just want to see what it's going to look like. I think I'm going to try something different, you guys. I'm leaving this fan on at full strength because it, it just it doesn't help anybody for me to be sweating. So we're going to go MOS, and I'm just going to apply some blush and apply some stuff and fast forward it and find some music that hopefully isn't too horrible but is free to lay on top of it and see what else is going on.
All right, you guys, cream products went on beautifully. Not a surprise. What's going to be the test is powder. And I am a little concerned. I don't want to ruin my brush. And I'm using the By Terry because of all the powders I have, this is the one I've used the longest. I understand the most. And I know how it will perform and should perform. Let's take a look at the brush. I mean, it went on fine. Yeah, there's no problems with the brush. It's not like using one of those oil-based sunscreens that where the oil just transfers onto your brush. I'm just cleaning off my brush right now. I saw the smoke of uh, the powder leaving the brush, which is always a good sign. It means I didn't get dimethicone or too much dimethicone on my powder brush. Okay, so now the shine is much less egregious and it's kind of a natural look, I feel, and I didn't have a problem, and my brush is not mangled, so points for that. Let's go in with a powder blush and see what happens. This is the Makeup by Mario in Mellow Mauve, and I kind of don't want to do this. I'd rather pat. Mind you, I did not powder this area of my face. No problem at all, but I have to say, this blush is really, I don't know what it is, it's very finely milled, it's something, that it just goes on so beautifully that, well, maybe it's not the best test for this. And I'm going into the Victoria Beckham in light, and just going to do a little powder bronzing to see how that happens how that happens, how that works. So right up here where I powdered, it's not a problem at all. I didn't powder right here, and I do feel a little, not pull, but I, I feel a little worry coming up like, oh, I hope I'm not taking off my foundation. It doesn't appear that I am, though. Yeah, when I'm putting it on the unpowdered area, I'm just thinking, I don't love that feeling. I don't love that feeling primarily because I don't want to get my brush mangled. It looks fine. There's no problem with it. There's no skipping or streaking. It hasn't removed my foundation. It's just, for me personally, I don't like that feeling. And now, oh, don't look at my brush. Yeah, I can see the sheen on these bristles of the sunscreen. So swiping, for me, not so much, unless you pat on a little powder first. Boom, that's it. I'm just kind of checking everything, you know what I mean, you guys, because it's, it has that dimethicone thing. So what do I think? So far, I think it's great. It doesn't feel uncomfortable. It doesn't feel greasy. However, if you have oily skin, you might think this feels greasy. It doesn't feel drying. It is shiny. I'm kind of used to that. It accepts the powder when you apply it in a ginger manner. The foundation went on beautifully. The cream products went on beautifully. The powder products, um, the Mario, fine, but I patted it. When I do a sweeping motion, some of it kind of gets on the brush, so I would powder nicely first. That's it for this one, you guys. I do like it. I do think it's a little bit expensive. I do like to review things from a variety of price points because I do think everybody should wear sunscreen. It's a necessary, and not everybody has the budget to spend $52 every two months on their sunscreen. Or maybe they have the budget, but they'd rather spend it on their vitamin C, which I totally get. So, and then for other people, $52 is no big deal. They absolutely have no problem spending that kind of money on their sunscreen. So I just kind of want to hit the less expensive things and the more expensive things. And that's going to wrap it up, you guys. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me. I hope this was helpful to you, and I hope you come back again. Until we meet again, be smart, be safe, and I'm wishing you good health.